Hi, and welcome to this short video explaining the key challenges all organizations have when it comes to health and well being management. Number one, most organizations, and this is research from Harvard Business Review, they've studied dozens, hundreds, thousands of organizations, and they all have the same four issues. And that first one is that it's really, really a challenge for most organizations to measure the business results of well-being. What are business results? This is the money coming in and out. Everyone knows with a gut feeling that investing in your people will help your business results. But how do you know you're doing it right? You're hosting all these activities, you're bringing in all these leaders, doing all these workshops, but what numbers do you need to see go up and down to show your management this is actually working and you're doing a good job? Number one, you can look at the number of absenteeism days. How many people are taking absenteeism days per year? And while it's healthy to be in this ease every once in a while, if these numbers are really out of the benchmarks, if they're more than 1%, 3%, it's not healthy anymore. So this is a first business number to look at when you're responsible for well-being or if you're a manager and you have to evaluate your well-being team. Another number you can measure is staff turnover. How many people are voluntarily leaving the company? Because if it's a really good thriving company and you can offer people growth perspectives, really good teams, really good well-being, these numbers shouldn't be too high. Again, this is another measure if your well-being is directed and strategized in the right way. There's six more of these, and that's what me and my team at Move It we do. We come to your company with a calculator, and we have a look at all these statistics and show you where you can challenge yourself, where you can grow, what areas need some extra attention, so you have clarity in your mind. And well-being isn't this fluffy thing and speakers and people doing this in their hours. It's really a conscious high performance strategy for your company to grow and to feel safe when you're hiring people that they're taking care of their well-being and you're supporting them in that because that is the biggest predictor of having a company that grows on the long term that's making sure people are not just focusing on the work but also on their well-being and that will show in those numbers the second key thing that 95 percent of companies struggle with is participation rates. So when your company is organizing a workshop, an event, a training, you'll probably see that it's usually the same people going 10 to 25% of the company. Now, how do you get 80% of the people in the company to join healthy activities? And one size doesn't fit all. And you've noticed that by now, not everyone gets excited to go running. Not everyone gets excited to eat healthy food. Not everyone gets excited to go to company social events. And that's why it's really, really important that your strategy of providing well-being for your people, and that's not just in a company, that is a council and a national government's responsibility too, that every person has its individual needs met and felt, feels heard and seeing when it comes to health and well-being. In this image, you can see background, um, tropical beach on the back. Looks pretty similar to where I'm at right now in Byron Bay. Me personally, I thrive being in tropical environments, being able to do yoga on the beach, being able to go in between my day. If I've had a big consult or a session or a training, I go to the beach, I walk, I clear my mind and boom, I'm there for the next session. And everyone is different. Some people rather be in their cave and have some time for themselves. Other people rather be social and talk about what they're going through. So there's no one size fits all. So with providing workshops you really need to know that you're providing for 80 percent of the people and that in their mindset they realize how important well-being is at move it we have a six-step methodology that makes sure we get 80 percent of the people heard get them along by listening to them and asking them what they need and providing software and tools so you can measure if you're actually providing for every single person in the company and where there are gaps or what areas of well-being 
aren't being addressed yet. And again, to connect that with number one, so you can get those business results and show your boss, yes, it's working and show yourself that it's not bringing in more and more and more. And the more you do, and you're getting burned out sometimes, many well-being managers feel responsible and see how much help people need. You need some kind of predictors and numbers to make sure what you're doing is the right thing. The third thing many companies and struggle with is that they bring in a lot of ad hoc workshops, an online webinar, a workshop, a team day, but then to get results, learning takes one to three months at least to learn a new habit. If you're never drinking and you're dehydrated, you can go and have the best juices and you'll be hydrated that day. But the goal is that you learn to make those juices and you have them at your office, for example. So it's so important that we think long term because well-being is long term. There's the midterm effects, one to three months. You can see it in your business numbers in three to six months. But to have a long term effect, it needs to become a culture, it needs to become an obvious all the areas of well-being need to be represented in your company. You need to become some kind of a high-performance retreat center and able to keep people to keep them connected because we're not the same world as 20, 30, 40 years ago where people were working locally and had a limited amount of companies they could work for. No, people can work all over the world right now online they can work as employees as freelancers to keep your people you need to make sure their purpose is aligned they're eating healthy food they're coming with a smile the vibe is good the colleagues are fun that's a lot and that creates a team that is necessary to hold your company and make it thrive and the last part is a to have this reporting to make sure 80% of the people join and to make sure that it's long-term habits, tiny habits that can be implemented and that people keep practicing because it's in their area of interest. To have all this, you need a strategy. And to have a strategy, it starts with a person. If your company is one of the 45% companies in America that doesn't have a well-being manager yet, or your company is outside of America and is one of the 90% of companies not having a well-being manager yet. Start looking at vacancies, for example, in Sydney and other countries that are thriving, that are attracting, that are having good cultures. Right now, well-being managers are the most requested job. In Australia alone, there's 65,000 people working in well-being on a population of 22 million with 12 million employed people. To give a reference, I think the number of marketeers was about one to two million. So if you realize what happened 10, 15, 20 years ago, where companies weren't doing marketing, like I started in marketing and these big companies were like, ah, we don't want to go on Facebook. What if our customers say bad things about us? Right now, that marketing area where they were afraid that customers are going to say bad things about them, that is now here employees are just talking online chatting online this company's good not good glass door it's all out there you don't want to wait until you have a, a two-star review you want to start proactively building your strategy and so it is important to have a really good strategy and to hire trained people because you'll find specialized people very quickly there's so many you'll probably get emails every day of meditation and breath work and yoga and all kinds of well-being modalities and you probably pick some every once in a while and this is great but you also need to realize these people they don't just want to come for a workshop they don't just want to do one thing they want to give yoga and after a year know that people actually have implemented these habits and have a better posture at work so there's a big market of individualized suppliers coming to you. But if you don't have a strategy around it where you actually know, should we work on nutrition? Should we work on breeding? Should we work on meditation? Should we work on purpose? If that strategy is missing, it's really hard to make decisions and it's almost impossible to do your reporting well. So those are the four key challenges that 
most organizations are challenging today. So if your company is proactive, wants to be ready for the future, wants to get the best people, the first people, the pioneers in your company to help with strategic consulting and well-being, work on it now. And this is going to be an investment you're going to feel for the next 30, 40 years. Start building that retreat feeling, but in a strategic way. Don't just plug in everything. Do it step by step by step. Okay, we've done this. This helps. We have this gap. This helps. Thanks for watching this. Um, if you want help building this strategy, we see for a company with 200 people in 60 days, a trained consultant who's done this can help you set this up. 60 days in six months, about one to two days a week. So have a look at how many people you're employing in your company. And then consider one or two days a week hiring one strategic consultant to spot all these people that you're paying wages and salaries and having connected with your customers, having one person, one to two days a week, or 200 and often thousands and 10,000s of people, one to two people supporting all of them. And yes, there's definitely HR and there's definitely a lot of organizations working on this, but have a look and ask around who is linking the results between nutrition or movement practices or workshops with the business results. Because those are the people you'll need to have a strategic approach who are going to be the glue and the connecting factor between your health and safety manager who's doing a great work protecting everyone, making sure they work in a safe way, your HR team helping with the soft skills and listening to people, your care team. They all need to be brought together and translated to business results, and it's gonna make decisions so much easier. Thank you for watching. My name is Hugh Johanna. I was presenting this from Byron Bay in our first Move Village wellbeing office. I was able to take the knowledge of eight years of working in corporate wellness and put it in a in a home office. So this office here, it's visible, it's in Byron Bay. You can uh, rent it for a company event if you have people burning out. Um, this office we made by bringing all natural materials. So what we're doing with nutrition, what goes in your body affects you, what goes in your house affects you. And I couldn't find research that a lot of it has been done before. So we have done a whole project researching thousands of hours, what is good in a home, what is good in an office, and how to have a productive work environment. Thank you for watching. and. I hope to hear from you because we would love to help your company be proactive right now, setting up this corporate wellness culture. Have an amazing day. Bye.